it's just gonna cut straight to zero. It's not even gonna be during a scheduled FOMC meeting. It's just going to be overnight, and then the market's gonna wake up the next day and and understand that the Fed did this because of an emergency, and uh, it the, the stock prices are gonna go all kinds of crazy, and gold's gonna go even crazier, and silver crazier still. You're watching Silver News Daily. Subscribe for more. Did you know that silver prices could skyrocket to new all-time highs, all thanks to a potential crisis that's about to hit the banks? It sounds dramatic, but experts are warning that the Federal Reserve may soon be forced to backpedal on its current policies, trying desperately to save the economy from absolute ruin. In today's video, we're diving deep into why this looming liquidity crisis could send demand for safe haven assets like silver through the roof. And trust me, go want to hear this before making any investment moves. That dollar spenders, the, the main dollar spenders, of course, the federal government with uh, all the money that they're spending all over the place destroying things. Uh, you know, there's a lot of collateral damage to the death of the dollar and we're part of it because we spend them and we use them. But, uh, you know, we can adapt. We can adapt and uh, the U.S. government can't <laughs> because that's their main... Uh, resource supply is the fact that the world accepts us dollars um but you know as for the the gold market itself it's it's pretty surprising that gold continues higher here even though uh and this is going to sound a little bit uh maybe heterodox or contradictory but it's it's how it's how things actually are supposed to work even though uh more money keeps entering the system and uh, the, the the money supply is still much higher than it would otherwise be had the 2020 and 2021 printing not happened, which means that the stimulus effect should still be here. Even though we're we're at that stage, gold is still going up to new all time record highs. I mean, it it shouldn't be that way. The 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 gold should really only be at all time record highs immediately after an inflationary uh, an inflationary spurt, right? Not not uh, in the months and years afterwards when, you know, the stocks start going up and other derivatives start going up. So money starts uh, leaving gold, leaving the safe haven, chasing the momentum. But we're, we're not seeing that now. We're seeing the, the momentum starting to die off and, uh, and, and gold hitting record highs. I mean, think about what happened in the last, in the last uh, bull and then bear market. Uh, the bull market lasted until 2011, and there was a bear market in 2015. So you had this this QE one, two, three, right, and then and then gold uh, hit record highs in 2011, and uh, then we had like a four year bear market as money started to flow out of gold. There was less of a panic about the dollar, and then they went into these risk assets again. Uh, we had a little bit of that in uh, into 2020. Too, but what gold hit a low of like sixteen ten, and then didn't go below that. So we're seeing sort of a repeat of the. We saw a little bit of a repeat of the twenty eleven to twenty fifteen bear market, but it was it really wasn't much. It was it was especially it was nothing compared to what we went through. Um, I don't know if you were you were actively investing in gold back then in twenty in twenty eleven to twenty fifteen, but uh, but I was, and I was much younger. I had a lot less capital. I was just starting out, but I, I was still in an end game mentality. I was uh, I was very naive, but you know it could last this long. But I remember going through the year, going through 2015, and like waking up nauseous and like realizing that my my portfolio was like cut in in half or even like 40 percent of what it once was. And I like and I was trying to convince my wife like we were right. I was I'm right about this. We just have to get through it. And I got through it. Thank God. But it was very difficult. This one wasn't much. Like okay, 2022 went down to 1610. Okay, I'm not, my my four is not doing so well, but whatever. It didn't really matter that much. So it's much easier this time, um, and uh, we're we're gonna go much higher once the next inflation round starts, and we can talk about that too. Uh, but you know, I'm pretty. Uh, just bottom line, I'm pretty surprised we're at, we're at all time highs in this situation right now. I I thought we would be lower, and uh, and. So the fact that we're at all-time highs means uh, means we have a long, we have a long way to go when the next inflation round starts. The financial world is on edge as the Federal Reserve's aggressive quantitative tightening (QT) measures are pushing the banking system to the brink. With the Fed shrinking its balance sheet and pulling liquidity out of the market, banks are finding themselves in a dangerous catch crunch. Imagine needing cash just to keep the lights on, but the supply is drying up. 
This is exactly what's happening now, and the situation is getting worse by the day. To put this into perspective, banks are resorting to massive nightly repurchase agreements, or repos just to meet their short-term funding needs. We're talking about over dollar two trillion in overnight borrowing. This desperate scramble for cash signals that something is seriously wrong, and as reserves continue to deplete, experts are worrying of a repeat of the 2019 repo market crisis, but this time it could be much more severe. Why does this matter for silver? Because when liquidity dries up and the banking system starts to crack, the Fed will have no choice but to reverse its tightening policy. This means turning the money creditors back on with quantitative easing key to flood the market with dollars and stabilize the system. And history has shown that when the Fed pivots to QE, safe haven assets like silver rally hard. So the big question is, how close are we to this tipping point? And what does it mean for silver prices? I just want to discuss for a minute the concept of a gold short squeeze. You know, um, this can uh, be construed as like a cheap subject um, because you, people say short squeeze and then, you know, we think of like Volkswagen or uh, that's the short squeeze that comes to mind now. Uh, that was like in the in the late 90s or something. These these short squeezes were where we like see a sudden vertical uh, line as shorts. Oh, we could talk about nickel, you know, the nickel short squeeze. Um, and, and then, you know, people turn off and they say, oh, another gold bug's talking about a short squeeze, never going to happen. The, I understand that. I, I get that point because theoretically, um, and this could be true. I, I mean, I'm not, uh, I, I don't examine banks balance sheets from the auditor perspective. So I don't know what they're actually lying about, but, uh, for every contract that a bullion bank is short in New York, there's supposed to be longer contract in London, right? They're, they're not supposed to gamble on it. It's not that they're placing a bet on the price of gold in a bank like JP Morgan is saying, well, I think gold's going to go down in the next month, so I'm going to open a short contract. They're not, that's not the word, what they're doing. They're called swaps, meaning they, they swap gold from New York to London. They go short in New York and they go long in London. And then if a, if a, if a client you know, stands for delivery, they just deliver the gold that they, or they do an exchange for physical with, from the position in New York to the position in London. And they're not really technically risking anything. However, so when, when we talk about short squeeze, why is it even worth talking about then? Because maybe they're not. <laughs> we, we don't really know what they're doing and who really owns the gold in, in, in London. Um, and you can come up with all these theories on who owns what, but the fact is nobody really knows. Probably not even the bank knows. Uh, so uh, what, what, I'm, what I'm basically talking about is that the, the amount of contracts net that the swaps, the ones that are supposed to be short in New York and long in London, supposed to be, they're, they're record short. They have the, the record amount of contracts that are, are they're selling short enough. Obviously, they ha somebody has to sell short in order for somebody else to go long, right? This isn't the first time the Fed has found itself between a rock and a hard place. Remember the repo crisis of 2019. Back then, the Fed had to intervene with billions of dollars emergency funding to calm the markets. Overnight lending rates had skyrocketed and liquidity evaporated almost overnight. The Fed quickly reversed its tightening policy, and what followed was a massive influx of liquidity into the system. So what happened to silver prices during that period? They surged. Investors flocked to safe haven assets in silver, along with gold saw a substantial increase in demand. Fast forward to 2020, when the pandemic hit and the Fed slashed interest rates to near zero while pumping trillions into the economy through QE. Once again, silver prices soared, nearly doubling in value within months. History has shown that when the Fed is forced to backtrack on its policies, safe haven assets benefit immensely. With current conditions echoing those past crises, we could be on the brink of another significant policy reversal. And if that happens, silver could be poised for an even bigger breakout this time around. But how likely is this scenario? And what's the trigger that could force the Fed's hand? Stay tuned as we explore the technical indicators and economic signals that could set the stage for silver's next big move. You can't go long off of nothing. So somebody's got to sell the contract. So they sell the contract and they provide the liquidity in the market. That's what they're supposed to do. 
Um, they're, they're short, like something like 250,000 contracts, maybe a little more. And, uh, uh that's what, like 2.25 million, what's 250 times a hundred, 250,000 times a hundred. That's 25 million ounces. Does that even exist in London? I don't think it does. Uh, so something's, something's off here. Um, and the fact, the fact that that open interest went up last week and, uh, it went up about 40,000 contracts. And the price of gold went up with it. That's normal. The price is supposed to go up with open interest. But at all-time highs, it means that the bullion banks are opening these new short contracts at the all-time highs. Now, if we're going to see a short squeeze, at least on the New York side, what we should see is falling open interest with a rise in gold price. We almost never see that, uh, which which tells you that at least theoretically they are balanced. They're 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 short New York, long London because they they're not pressured. So they just they wait for the price to to fall and then for people to you know either book their profits or whatever they're doing, uh, and then they they then they exchange the contracts. Uh, but if we we did see one time. One time falling open interest and a rising price, and that was into the 2011 top in September 2011. Uh, for about two or three months, we saw it. Falling open interest, rising gold price. We're not seeing that yet. If we start seeing that, then we can say it's a short squeeze. I don't I don't know if that, me, if that means they're going to default in London. I'm not making like apocalyptic pr predictions here that, to say that the monetary system is going to die on a short squeeze. I don't think so because I think it's mostly a fiction. It's, it's going to die in the streets in you know in the supermarkets in the, in the United States that's where that's where it's going to die that's where gold's going to go to infinity but this could be a sign that uh that we're we're going in that direction so watch open interest if if the open interest goes down and price goes up um then we're on a new york size short squeeze and what that does to the bullion banks frankly i don't really know now let's talk about what the charts are telling us from a technical perspective silver is already showing signs of strength just recently, we saw silver break through a key resistance level at $1.29.35, which had held it back for months. This breakout wasn't just a minor bump. It coincided with the 100-day simple moving average, signaling a fresh wave of bullish momentum. And guess what? Silver didn't stop there. It pushed past the $1.31 mark and is now eyeing the $1.32 level, a price we haven't seen in almost a decade. But what does this mean for investors? Well, for one, technical analysts are buzzing. Positive oscillators on the daily chart suggest that the path of least resistance for silver is to the upside. The momentum is there, and it's building. We're seeing higher highs and higher lows, which are classic indicators of a bullish trend. If silver can clear the $1.32 barrier, it could pave the way for a run towards $1.34 or even higher. And if the Fed's liquidity crisis forces a policy reversal, this technical setup could turn into a massive rally. Remember, in times of economic uncertainty, technical levels can get blown out of the water as safe haven demand surges. So we have the technicals lining up with the fundamentals, and the market is already showing signs of accumulating silver. The big question now is, can this momentum hold... And will it be enough to push silver to new heights? Let's dive into one of the key drivers that could keep this rally going silver's growing industrial demand. Well, so silver short squeeze, if you're referring to futures, um, first of all, let's let's just like reframe what a short squeeze is in terms of gold and silver, right? If you're long the dollar, if you have dollars in your bank account, uh, you know, this, this might seem like an academic uh, or philosophical point. I guess it is, but it's something I had to keep in mind. If you own own dollars, then you are short silver and gold. Okay, that's just to get get you know a, a floor here on what we're talking about. Because if you own what what are dollars originally? Dollars are a substitute or a derivative of originally the silver and the gold that people stored in the banks in order to get the dollars to spend them. Right. So once you own a dollar, you are by definition short silver. You've already sold it to a bank, and now it's sitting somewhere in a coin shop. Uh, you know, some how the silver got there is for, through some chain, and uh, now it's there, and you have the dollars. Been generations later, uh, essentially, that's it, it, the 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 final short squeeze in silver is going to be the the silver parabola up to the fifteen to one ratio, whatever the dollar amount that's going to be. I don't know. Um, so I, I have noticed 
that uh, the open interest in silver futures, if we're going to narrow down the discussion from philosophy to actually practical what's going on in the futures market now, um, the, the open interest, if I remember correctly, has gone down since May from 190,000 contracts, which is pretty high for silver, to I think now it's like 130. Maybe it's a little higher now. Maybe it's like 135, uh, depending on what happens today and yesterday. I didn't check it. But say about 60,000 contracts down since May. Um, that's about a, th about a third, about a third of closed. And the price is the same. Um, it was it was close to $30. Maybe it was like 27, 28 in May, something like that. And now it's uh, 30. I mean, <laughs> I hope I'm right about that. I, I, you know, I don't, I don't track it every day or know which month, <laughs> what price it was exactly. Um, but we're, we're essentially we're at 30 again and open interest is reset lower, which means that there's a lot of fuel in the futures market for speculators to establish long positions at these prices and bring open interest up again. Uh, so I, I don't know when the next, ra when the rally is going to start from 30 to say 50 or when that really shot is going to be, I think it's going to be quick. You know, maybe there's going to be like a stop at 40, but like once we pass 30 and we're comfortably above it, I think the trip to 50 is going to take, you know, a matter of months or, or less. Um, so, so I'm saying we have a lot of fuel whenever it starts. Um, it's going to be quick after that, but we could hang around here for a while. Um, and uh, we have about, let's say, 60,000 contracts of space to move up here. So it's pretty exciting. Beyond its role as a safe haven asset, Silver has another powerful tailwind, surging industrial demand. Silver isn't just sitting in vaults or being minted into coins. It's a critical component in a wide array of technologies that are booming right now, from photovoltaic cells in solar panels to electronic components in 5G networks and electric vehicles, silver is everywhere, and this demand is growing at an unprecedented pace. Take the solar industry, for example. The global push towards renewable energy has driven demand for photovoltaic installations to record highs. We're talking about a 140% increase in newly added installations in China alone last year, Switching global capacity additions above 400 gigawatts. What's more, new technological advancements, like the shift to n-type solar cells, are increasing the amount of silver needed in each panel. This means that as more solar panels are produced, the demand for silver only goes up. And it doesn't stop there. The automotive industry is rapidly evolving, with more electronic components and investment in battery infrastructure than ever before. Silver is a key material in these electronic systems. And as the world transitions to electric vehicles, the demand for silver will continue to soar. The bottom line, silver's industrial demand isn't just a temporary trend. It's a long-term growth story. And with supply already tight, any additional demand could push prices even higher. But with such strong demand, why haven't prices exploded yet? The answer lies in the complex dance between supply, demand, and market speculation, which will break down next. Stay with us as we explore why silver's potential is far from fully realized. Um, so it's important to understand the train of money here. Um, when when the Federal Reserve shrinks its balance sheet, it gathers it gathers dollars in from whatever parts of the economy to buy, uh, and then the, the the debt that's on its balance sheet, whatever treasuries it is. Uh, gets repaid to the Fed. The Fed doesn't reinvest the dollars. The dollars come from 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 wherever, from uh, whoever owns the other side of the treasuries. Uh, 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 you know, essentially the government, right? They're paying it back, but the government gets the money from taxpayers, right? It's vacuumed up through through the federal government to the Fed. The Fed takes it out of existence, uh, and and th then the then what happens is the government. Uh, issues a tre a T bill right a treasure a short term treasury bill for dollars uh that that comes from uh, the reverse repos that are earning 5.3% back at the fed so there's like there's like this store of money at the fed while the fed is sucking dollars out of existence from the treasury to the fed out of existence they're putting money from the reverse repos back to the treasury right when the treasury sells a T bill and that money in the treasury goes and spreads out throughout the world on whatever the government decides to spend money on. So really it's like it's like money's being vacuumed out of 
the banking system and then being shoved back into the banking system through the same treasury mechanism <laughs> through the reverse repos. So then the, the the question we have this like this circle going on is like drain going on, but it's keep, it keeps being refilled by the reverse repos in the same direction. So so the question is like, what happens when there's no more reverse repos? Where is the where are the other dollars going to come from? Right, they've got to come from something. You can't just you can't just like the the, the treasury can't just sell a T bill and then and then have dollars come into existence to buy that T bill unless the Fed's doing it. But the Fed can't do that directly, uh, and and they're not and they're still they're still shrinking their balance sheet. QT is still ongoing. It's at a slower pace, but it's still ongoing. So where do those dollars come from? Uh, the the answer is they got to come from bank reserves. With the liquidity crisis worsening and industrial demand for silver at an all-time high, we're now approaching the critical juncture. The Federal Reserve's aggressive stance on quantitative tightening has squeezed the financial system to its limits. But as history shows, there's only so much pressure the Fed can apply before something breaks. And when that happens, they'll be forced to pivot back to quantitative easing key, flooding the economy with liquidity once more. This scenario isn't just speculation. It's becoming increasingly likely. The repo market is already under immense strain, with banks struggling to meet their short-term cash needs. Remember, a liquidity crisis doesn't just affect Wall Street. It can ripple through the entire economy, causing stock market chaos, corporate bankruptcies, and even unemployment spikes. The Fed knows this and has intervened before to prevent such meltdowns. If the Fed is pushed into reversing its policy, we could see a dramatic shift from tightening to the easing almost overnight. This would mean lower interest rates and a weaker U.S. dollar. And historically, when the Fed pivots to QE, it's a green light for silver. The flood of dollars into the market reduces the opportunity cost of holding non-yielding assets like silver and gold, making them much more attractive. So what does this mean for silver prices? Simply put, we could be on the brink of a massive rally. If the Fed signals a reversal, we could see silver prices break through current resistance levels and head towards new all-time highs. The critical question now is, how prepared are you for this potential economic turning point? We're going to dig deeper into the implications for the U.S. dollar and why silver could be the safe haven asset of choice in the next financial storm. But bank reserves are being used up. By what? They're being used up by repos, because you have all these all these uh, speculators that are using these uh, these repurchase this repurchase cash. That look, just take a step back. If there's if, if there's repos going on, right? That banks are trading treasuries that they have on their balance sheet for cash that they need for the night. If that's happening, that means that a lot of banks are short cash. Otherwise, they wouldn't be borrowing cash overnight. Right? Why would you need to do that? You're going to pay, what are their rates? 5.3, 5.35% for cash that you don't need? Well, either, either they're borrowing it because somebody else is borrowing it from them for the night to like satisfy some contract that they're short, maybe it's treasuries itself, uh, or the bank is short cash and they need to borrow the money. So the, the the current repo volume is like 2.2 trillion a night. It's it fluctuates wildly between like 2 trillion and 2.4 trillion lately, like 400 billion dollars a night. And uh, then where's this stuff going to come from if there's no more reverse repos? It's going to come from the bank reserves and there's not enough money there. Because like 60 70% of it's being used for repos already. And once you get too high, then there's going to be a repocalypse, meaning the, the the interest rates, the overnight interest rates between banks are going to rise to like 10% just like they did 5 years ago tomorrow. So th this is going to happen when the reverse repos run out, and we're we were we're down. I think today forty five billion. I predicted this uh, that we're going to be around two hundred forty billion. I think I even used that number um, uh, on the Endgame Investor uh, that I wrote this morning because I I, I I I just saw that today was corporate tax day. So all the corporations are sp are, are sending their tax money into the treasury, and uh, and that that money comes from reserves and it goes into the treasury's account, and then they spend it back in. Uh, so we're down about 45 billion. There's 200. There's 240 billion left. 239 billion. It should take I don't know six to eight weeks. It, the, the pace could always change. It could be November. It could even be December. I've been wrong about it before. It doesn't really matter when. The trajectory is down. It's going to continue down until the Fed reverses QT to QE again. 
And that's what was going to bring, that's what's going to skyrocket gold. It's going to, there's going to be some kind of crisis that, that they're going to, they're going to, that's going to trigger. It's not going to be like, oh, I think we're going to, I think we're going to calmly pivot now. There's no, there's no calmness. It's, it's, it's always sudden. Let's talk about the U.S. dollar. It's no secret that the dollar has been riding high for the past few years, benefiting from higher interest rates and a relatively strong economy. But all of that could change in an instant if the Fed is forced to reverse course. A sudden switch from tightening to easing would likely send the dollar tumbling. And when the dollar falls, the appeal of safe haven assets like silver and gold skyrockets. Why? Because a weaker dollar makes precious metals cheaper for investors holding other currencies, boosting global demand. Historically, when the dollar declines, we see a corresponding rise in silver prices. In fact, the inverse correlation between the two is one of the strongest in the financial markets. So, a significant drop in the dollar could be the catalyst that sends silver soaring. But there's more to the story. Investors are already jittery about the stability of the financial system. Global tensions, rising debt levels, and fears of a recession are driving a flight to safety. Silver, with its dual role as both a precious metal and an industrial commodity, offers a unique hedge against these risks. It's no wonder that we're seeing increased speculative positioning in silver futures, as traders bet on higher prices. So what does this mean for you? If the Fed's backpedal triggers a dollar decline, we could see a flood of money moving into silver. This could be the start of a bull run unlike any we've seen in recent years. But what do the experts think? Let's take a look at some of the bold predictions being made about silver's potential and why market sentiment is aligning for a perfect storm. Yeah, I think the whole discussion is it going to be 25 base points, is it going to be 50 base, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter what it's going to be. It, it, it of course, it'll have sh different short-term effects. Like, okay, so if you own a, if you own a short-term option on gold, maybe you'll make more money uh, if there's a fifty basis point cut rather than a twenty-five. I don't play that game. I don't care, and and really, I don't I don't suggest anybody should care because it's a dangerous game and it's uh it's just dopamine injections, and uh, you know I don't I don't want that in my brain. I just, I want to stay calm. I want to stay level. Uh, so. It's look, what's going to happen is there's going to there's going to be an accident and it's going to be serious. It's going to be like the apocalypse five years ago, or it's going to be something similar, but slightly different. Whatever it's going to be, it's going to be. Um, but it's 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 a mathematical certainty because all of these institutions need trillions of dollars and the amount of dollars that are available keep shrinking. So eventually you hit a wall and that wall causes a domino effect. So. When that when that happens, whenever it does, uh, probably after a reverse, sometime shortly after a reverse repos fall to zero, then you're going to see a cut back down to zero uh, in short term rates. They're going to cut straight back down to zero, just like they did in 2020, just like they basically did in 2008. 2008 took a little bit longer, maybe I don't know how many months exactly, but it was basically down to zero. This time it's going to be one cut to zero. <laughs> and and it's not it's probably not even going to be at a scheduled uh FOMC press release conference decision board whatever it's not it's not going to be that it's going to be in the middle of the night in an emergency meeting because of something that happened and it's going to be sudden and then the market's going to wake up the next day and and understand that the Fed did this because of an emergency and uh it the stock prices are going to go all kinds of crazy and gold's going to go even crazier and silver crazier still Market experts are starting to sound the alarm on what could be the most significant silver rally in years. Take Grafted Faber, for instance. He's been closely watching the Fed's every move and believes we're heading towards a perfect storm for silver. Faber predicts that once the Fed is forced to reverse its policies, silver demand could explode, pushing prices to all-time highs. But he's not the only one. Analysts across the board are seeing signs of a silver surge. They point to several factors, a looming liquidity crisis, a potential Fed pivot, and unprecedented industrial demand. All these ingredients create the ideal conditions for a massive rally, and the sentiment among market participants reflects this. Net speculative positioning in silver futures has remained strong, indicating that traders are gearing up for a big move. Even traditional safe haven buyers 
who typically focus on gold, are starting to shift their attention to silver. Why? Because silver offers a unique combination of safety and growth potential that gold simply can't match right now. It's cheaper, more volatile, and with the current supply constraints, it could see much larger percentage gains. So, what are we looking at in terms of potential price targets? Some experts are predicting that silver could break through the $1.50 mark, surpassing its 2011 highs. Others are even more bullish, forecasting prices as high as $1.100 or more if the economic conditions align perfectly. It might sound far-fetched, but we've seen silver make parabolic moves before. The question is, will this time be different? As the anticipation builds, all eyes are on the Fed. If they signal a shift back to quantitative easing, it could trigger a tidal wave of buying in the silver market. But what does this mean for you as an investor? How do you position yourself to take advantage of this potential silver bull run? Let's connect all the dots in our final step and see how silver could skyrocket to new all-time highs. Um, yeah, so the, about getting your funds outside of the banking system, right? The, the, one of, the, one of the, um, the apocalyptic views that I try to counter, right? People might see me as apocalyptic. I'm actually anti-apocalyptic. I think everything's going to turn out fine as long as you understand what's going on. Um, I'm not saying everything's going to be perfect, that everyone's going to survive this, but but it, but I think humanity will be fine. I think we'll all be we'll, we'll be okay as a species, we'll be okay as a planet, things will be better when this is over. Um, but one of the things I try to counter is that people say, oh, well, if you're saying if what you're saying is true, the dollar really collapses, then you know, nobody's gonna be trading, there's gonna be no money, and it's gonna be everyone for himself, and we're all gonna shoot each other in this like, you know, uh uh, apocalyptic Mad Max kind of world. No, 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 we're not because because when the, when the dollar dies, what people are going to have to do is find the next most liquid commodity that isn't the dollar because that's where the value is going to be, uh, and and we will very quickly go right back into monetary exchange. And the faster we the, the faster us stackers spend our money into the economy, the more lives we will save. Right? We're not we're not going to break down into a jungle, uh, you know, everybody eating everybody. It's not going to happen. We're going to go back to money because essentially as messed up as we all are now because of everything that government has done to us to to disturb our 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 perception of reality to such a point that it seems like the entire, entire world is insane asylum. When they go away, we will very quickly gain our sanity back, right? It'll be okay. And we got it. We, that's why you have to keep your money outside, your real money outside the financial system so that it doesn't go down with it so that you have money after the financial system is done is done to spend real money to spend into a real economy so you can get real things and help real people build real stuff right and get back to reality because we're all in the clouds right now um and and i and, and we feel it like I, I i still get confused with what's real like i i see a piece of news is that real is that a lie did trump really get shot again i have no idea i don't know what's going on it, this college would just be a story to distract me I, I don't know, but I, I know that once this is all over, they're going to stop the lies because lies cost money and they don't have any money to spend. Um, this is what I talk about in the end game investor. The idea is the idea of what I of what I do is to bring people back down to earth, including myself. Really, it's about bringing myself back to earth and focusing myself. And you could just listen to my thoughts. But I try to bring everything down to very logical, basic principles so that everything makes sense from uh, from a deductive standpoint, so that whatever happens in the market, you can see it within the framework of what must logically happen in the end, and you're not really uh, uh, you're not really shaken by anything that's going on, in, unless you're you know crazy enough to be leveraged, which I highly recommend against. So staying staying grounded, staying sane, uh, staying physical, uh, which partly is keep some of your money outside the financial system, and uh, and and just stay calm. That's my point. All the pieces are in place for Silver to make a historic run. We have a brewing liquidity crisis, a Federal Reserve that could be forced to reverse its course, and surging industrial demand. It's a perfect storm that could send silver prices into uncharted territory. Let's connect the dots. If the Fed pivots back to quantitative easing, it will flood the market with liquidity, weakening the dollar and driving investors towards safe haven assets. We've seen this pattern before, when the Fed loosens its grip, silver soars. And this time, the technicals are already bullish. 
Silver is broken through key resistance levels, and with every dip being bought up, the momentum is building. Now, add the surge in industrial demand. Solar energy, electric vehicles, and electronics are consuming more silver than ever before. Supply can't keep up in any further squeeze, but will only amplify the price spike. Remember, silver isn't just a hedge against economic uncertainty. It's a critical component of the technology shaping our future. With all these factors combined, silver could be on its way to surpassing its previous highs of $1.50 per ounce. Some experts are even forecasting prices north of $1.100 if the perfect storm materializes. It's a bold prediction, but not without precedent. We've seen silver's explosive potential in the past, and the current setup is more compelling than ever. So what does this mean for you? If you're looking for a hedge against economic chaos, silver might just be your best bet. As always, do your own research and make informed decisions. But keep in mind, with all the uncertainty in the markets, silver could be the lifeboat that keeps your portfolio afloat. If you found this analysis helpful, don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more insights on how to protect and grow your wealth in these volatile times. And remember, this is not financial advice. Always consult with a professional before making any investment decisions. Stay safe and let's keep an eye on Silver's incredible journey.